Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech and iOS 12 came out today to the public and on my iPhone 8 Plus came in at 1.59 gigabytes. Let's take a look at the build number. You can see the build is 16A366. Now if you have the Gold Master, it's got the same exact build number. So all you'll need to do is remove your beta profile and there's no more updating. So go to settings, go to general, scroll down until you get to your profile tap on the profile, remove this if you were in the beta or public beta program, then reboot and you're on the final version. You just had it about a week early and that's the exact same thing. Now, if you want to continue to get beta updates, you'll need to have that profile installed. Now there's automatic updates as well. That's one of the new features under software update. So you can turn that on or off. I leave it off so I can check myself. Now the first major change is speed on older devices, such as the 5s, which is the oldest supported device. Apple says they've increased speed by up to 70%, specifically on things like opening the camera from the lock screen. It should be up to 70% faster. Sometimes it's really fast. Sometimes it's a little bit slower, but overall the performance has improved. Also, they claim the keyboard is faster up to 50% faster. And then also two times faster when it comes to launching an app and then also smoother animation. So if we go into the app switcher, it's nice and smooth. Everything seems to be pretty smooth in general. Now, the next thing is stability. iOS 11 was not known for its stability as far as app crashes and things all over the operating system. iOS 12 is supposed to fix that. And one of the things they did this year was not redesign the whole interface because they wanted to focus on stability. And we've seen that throughout the betas and iOS 12 is pretty smooth and stable. Now, the next thing has to do specifically with the iPhone 10, the 10s, the 10s Max and the 10R when those are out or maybe they're out by the time you're watching this. And that has to do with Animoji and Memoji. So let me go into messages and show you that. So we'll go into messages here and then we'll go to Animoji. And this is my Memoji. Now, this is fully customizable. You can go in here, edit and change all sorts of things, everything from hats to hairstyles to whatever you want you can change. So headwear, eyewear, facial hair. Maybe I want to add some sideburns. I can do that and bring my face into view. You'll see, I can move it around and you can change whatever you'd like. So it's pretty nice. And if you're into customization, you'll probably enjoy that. Now, Animoji, they've added some new ones as well. There's a new ghost Animoji. You've got T-Rex, a koala and a tiger. So all of these are new and emoji and you've got the new customizable memoji. Now again, there's camera effects within things like messages and FaceTime. So if we go here, turn on the camera, we'll flip it around and you can see there's me. And here we have a little effects button. Now this isn't carried to all iPhones, but we do have effects so you can use your an emoji. So maybe we'll do this. And now there we go. It stuttered a little bit, but I think you get the idea. It's within the, the application itself. So you can use any of those, uh, use yourself or whatever you'd like. I think you get the idea. So that's some of the effects. Uh, you also get other effects here as well. So you've got filters, you can put text over you. Uh, maybe we'll just put some text over there and you can use this for all sorts of effects. Now, like I said, it's not available on everything, including the iPad. So they've changed this up quite a bit and added a lot of things, shapes, filters, all sorts of things. So if you want, you want shapes, you can add arrows or whatever you'd like and move it around. And it's pretty intuitive, but if you want to customize, you can do that. Now, aside from the camera effects, another thing that uses the camera is AR or augmented reality. So it's been updated so you can share the experience. And one of the thing Apple showed is that they used an iPad and then another iPad within a Lego environment. They had Legos on a table and then uh, they had the iPads connected to one another and they were both seeing the same thing in real time between the iPads and sharing the experience. That's something that's been updated in the background that app makers can take advantage of. Now, one of the things they added was the measure app, which uses augmented reality. So maybe you want to measure a distance and find a flat surface and then you can measure. So maybe you want to know how far the reminders app is from the settings app. It's three and a half inches and it stays there until you clear it. So you can look away, come back and your measurement will still be there. If you don't want inches, you can see how many centimeters it is. Depending on where you're at, it will change. So that's a really handy app and I've used it throughout the betas quite a bit. 
Now the next thing is screen time. So maybe you're using your phone and you want to know how much you're using your phone. Well, screen time, it's across all of these devices. And let me go here. It will load all of the times that you've used together into one place. So we'll go to screen time and you'll see right now it says 19 minutes and it's a little bit screwy, but let's go to my phone and let's go over the last seven days. And so you'll see all the different days together. And I think you get the idea. It's a little bit buggy combining all of these together for some reason, but it shows you what the times are. And then you can set app limits and everything else. It shows you how many pickups you can set a limit on how often you're using this. You can block other people. So if I go to app limits, you can add a limit and then you can add a limit to different categories as well. So if you have children, you want to monitor them or disallow them to use it too much, you can do that. Now, the next thing is one of my favorites, even though it's super simple, and that has to do with notifications. Notifications on iOS were a pain in the neck before. Now they're grouped. So you can see here they're grouped. Here's my Instagram. If I tap them, they open up. I can show less. I can swipe and I have more options. There we go. I can view, I can manage, and then I can deliver quietly or turn them off. And then there's settings specifically for these notifications as well. So that's one thing that I really like having on iOS. It makes it so much easier to see your notifications from things you care about, turn them off and see them grouped how you would want to. Now, another thing they've changed is do not disturb. Now in the control panel, you've got do not disturb. You can 3D touch on it and say for one hour until this evening, until I leave this location or go to schedule and in schedule, you have bedtime and you can schedule bedtime and silence the phone when it's locked and really customize this. And then it won't let anything disturb you, including lighting up your screen for a notification while this is on and you're at bedtime. So it's really nice. It's something I use every night and find it to be something that's very valuable now. Now the next thing is photos. Photos has been updated and you can see here some photos with wallpapers and what they've done is changed the albums and brought a lot of features into it. So it's updated with a new design for the albums tab. So let me go down to the bottom and at the bottom you've got media types. And if you don't have any of these media types, they won't show up. So if you don't have any selfies, they won't be there. So it's a little bit redesigned. And then now you have for you and under for you, it has featured photos, suggestions, all sorts of things. And there's me and it has all sorts of things in here, uh, and better photo search. So maybe you want to look for places and people you can do that. Now it's much better and you can look for more than one thing at once. So you want maybe a person in a specific place, you're good to go fall or autumn there. Anything I've taken in the fall or autumn will show up there. So photos has been updated. It's really nice. Now, another thing is Siri shortcuts. This is a really nice customization of the iPhone that lets you speak Siri commands that you customize in order for it to do different tasks. Now there's two parts to this. One is built into the operating system itself. And the other is this app that you download on the app store. So if you go into settings, then you go to Siri, you'll see there's some shortcuts here. So I have my shortcuts right here, and these are built into the app. And you can say log caffeine. If I run that, I can record a phrase. I could say coffee and it would bring this up so you can change it to whatever you'd like, but you create this specific one in this app here. You'll see it'll load here. It'll take a moment. So that's created in here, but it also integrates directly in here. Once you have that app, now there's things built in as well that it suggests. So the suggested shortcuts are already there and those are based on apps and you can just use them, but you can also make a highly customizable shortcut. That's a replacement for this app called workflow that I have right here. So workflow was bought by Apple and replaced with shortcuts and it's more tightly integrated into the OS. So you can create new ones. There's galleries and I have a separate video on how that works and I'll link it in the description below. Now, another thing has to do with privacy. Everyone cares about privacy. No one wants all their information out there all the time. And Apple's really big on this and has added some features to iOS 12 to help with that even further. So Safari now prevents share buttons and comment widgets on web pages from tracking you without your permission. So in Safari, you're using Safari and maybe you go to a website and then you go to another one. Well, normally you have a tracking cookie that's placed on there by the website and that kind of tells the next ad 
advertise your what you're looking at. And then, of course, maybe you looked at something for someone's baby shower and you don't have a child. And all of a sudden now you've, you're getting all these diaper ads and everything. This prevents that because it doesn't allow cross tracking between websites. So maybe I go from Apple to Google or something else. It won't allow that to be tracked. Safari also prevents advertising from advertisers from collecting your device's unique characteristics. So they can't identify your device or retarget ads. So they even use your device characteristics as far as iPhone seven Safari running this version in this part of the country. They don't allow that anymore. And that's a really nice feature. Now, aside from that, everything runs nice and smooth now that we're on here. And one of the things they've updated is Apple books. Now it's no longer iBooks, it's Apple books. So now we're in the library and here's a bunch of different books in here, PDFs, things like that. But here's a couple books and it looks a little bit different. Now the interface has been redesigned for some reason. It can't connect to the internet. It'll take a moment. There we go. The interface has been redesigned and it just looks a little bit different. So that's something they've updated. They've also updated stocks as well. So the stocks app altogether, you can see welcome to stocks. I normally use it on the iPhone 10, but you'll get this the first time you go into it. And then now you've got top stories linked to stocks you might be tracking. And it just gives you all your business news here. And it looks a little bit different. So they've updated that as well. Now voice memos has been updated and these updates carry across to the iPad as well. So if we go over to the iPad, you've got voice memos now and you can just record a voice memo. So I'm recording a video for iOS and here is my voice memo. And you can see at the top, there's some text. I have it blurred. It's my home address. It marks where you took the actual voice memo. So you know where it's at and that's it again. It marks where it's at. So that's a nice little feature and an updated app as well. There's also updated navigation in maps. So that part's nice. Let's go into my iPhone 10 to take a look at that. Now, Apple maps has also been updated and Apple has greatly updated it in certain cities. And these should be live in most big cities pretty soon if they're not already. But San Francisco is one of them where they've made maps much more comprehensive. You've got a lot more information and it just looks a little bit different. So you've got more information about all the different locations around there. Coit Tower, you'll see Yerba Buena Center. They're all here and you can go directly to them, get directions and get information about them. So it's a nice update to maps and navigation works really well. And speaking of navigation, navigation on Apple CarPlay is now allowing for third party apps to work as well. And as soon as I have those, I'll show that to you in a separate video. But Google Maps and Waze, which are both owned by Google, they need to update their apps for that to work. It's already in beta and at the time of this video, it may or may not be out. So it's hard to say, but I can't wait for it to come out and use Google Maps or Waze right through Apple CarPlay instead of Apple Maps. Now, another thing that's really nice is if you're on a website in Safari and you need a new password, it will suggest a strong password for you using face ID or touch ID. And then it just, it's a new dialogue and it fills those things in. It also recognizes when you need an SMS two factor authentication code. If you're on that website, it's asking for it and it comes in via a text. It will help you autofill that over to that. So it's a really nice little feature they've added. Now, many people are familiar with this, but they've updated the battery app to be more comprehensive. It now tells you your battery health. That was part of iOS 11, but it's a new design as far as the way it looks. So it's a lot different. We'll wait for it to load here. See if we can get it to load on this as well, but we'll wait for it to load. There we go. It hasn't been on very long on these other devices, at least today anyway, but you'll see it tells you your battery life over the last 24 hours, 10 days, it gives you your screen on time. It's not the same as usage, but it tells you your actual time. The display is turned on and when it's doing something turned off, like playing music as well. So that's been redesigned also. Now on the iPad, there's new gestures and those gestures have been changed to put the control center up here very much like the iPhone. So I think they're, they're preparing for a new iPad next year or next month, even, uh, that's going to have very similar setups as the iPhone 10 with face ID. And you've got that control center. You've also got some new gestures by quite quickly swiping up while you're in an app. So if you want to get back to the home screen, you can quickly swipe up. Hit retry there. You can quickly swipe up if you're at the app store, 
you'll see we're back and forth very quickly and they've just changed those couple of things everything else is pretty much the same on the ipad itself now they do have a quick type keyboard on the iphone and that helps as well as far as let's go here We've got the keyboard and if we need a different quick type keyboard we can change it to be side to side so let's see here keyboard settings then we've got one-handed keyboard we can turn that on left or right go back and you'll see now we've got a one-handed keyboard on the left side or the right side you can customize that as well now also they've added a couple things for the trackpad on a device so on a 3d touch device you just push and you can move the cursor around here on the top but if you don't have a 3d touch device maybe an iphone 5s for example you can do that by holding the space bar now so let's go into something that needs let's go to the music or music app here wait for it to load go here and if we hold the space bar now we can move back and forth and that goes all the way back to the 5s or any other device so i can type whatever but then move back and forth the same way just by tapping and holding it feels pretty much the same as the 3d touch version of that on the iphone 10. so one of the things a lot of people have wanted is favicons or favicons if i go into safari here we we'll go to another tab you can see there's the little favicon there so it's on the ipad only but there it is that's the icon for my website right there and that carries across just about every single website as long as you have that feature turned on in settings so it's in settings and then it's just show icons in tabs as long as you have that on you'll have that now another thing that i wanted to show you is a new gesture on the iphone to close apps so if you're familiar with closing apps on the iphone 10 normally you'd have to tap and hold the the web page or whatever app you're on now you can just swipe it off you don't have to do that swipe up swipe off pretty simple and straightforward now there's a feature that's not here yet and it has to do with facetime and i was so looking forward to this but they delayed it that's facetime or group facetime up to 32 people at once so that's coming in ios 12.1 so we'll see that maybe in a couple months or a month at this point but that's something i was looking forward to facetime with at least more than one pe person we've had that in iChat on the mac a long time ago and they took that away unfortunately and it's been i think due to patent disputes now of course i ran a geek bench so let's take a look at that you can see it came in at 4255 on single core 10620 on multi-core if we look at the history it's a little bit improved over the previous one by more than a hundred on multi-core and a little bit on the single core so that's good news and it feels nice and smooth so that's pretty much it for ios 12 there are a few little changes like display accommodations you'll see auto brightness is here they keep moving that around it, it could be changed in the next update it's hard to say but they keep moving a lot of those things around it's been improved with a lot of different things all over the place there's little changes to, and tweaks all over but right now it's hard to say exactly every little change because they change so many little things it could be a little tweak to an icon or something like that but overall it's been greatly changed and most of the changes i welcome and the stability has been great i'll let you know in a follow-up how the battery is because that does take a few days to know for sure but let me know what you think in the comments below i'll leave a link to the wallpaper in the description as i always do as always thanks for watching this is aaron i'll see you next time